Clock in, clock in. Black got just walked in. Team Black got a stunt up, man. Yo, we back with another video, man. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that sub button. If you ain't already like it up, make sure you like it. Then I go to every device in your house and like this bit. So each person should like it at least four or five times. You feel what I'm saying? Right now, we got this video of young boy starting the war at 16. Damn, that boy only 16? Start a whole damn war like that? Yeah, boy, you a little bit too hot out here, boy. You feel what I'm saying? He was addicted to them hot Cheetos. Shit had him tripping. <laughs> we real head hunters, man. Come on, man. Open their mouth, came to where they was, man. You mad because your brother is dead. Don't make me talk about you little utterly people, man. For the longest time now, Baton Rouge has been a breeding ground for young men toting sticks and running down on rival gang members, all in the hopes of putting somebody on the news. Putting somebody on the news. Who the hell is this talking? Where the hell are you from, boys? You in India making this video, boy? What the hell? The hell I just clicked on. I live on this street, and this by the worst street to live on. You say living in hell? This is hell right here. The young folks don't have no respect for old elders. I mean, take a look. Why are they going to have respect for people who just, they selling drugs to? You feel what I'm saying? Like, auntie. You know you waiting for somebody to serve you. You talking about respect. You don't even be coming with the whole thing. You be coming short in some motion and you still want folks to respect you. I tell you, you a little bit too hot at you now. You feel what I'm saying? You trim. Homicides in Baton Rouge. That number rose up to 107 at the end of 2017. Damn. Sparking the deadliest year recorded in Baton Rouge history since 2007. A big proponent for so much bloodshed in the city is the result of two rival gangs, Top Boy Gorillas in the North and bottom boy gorillas in the south man tell me why i feel like this is like a this is a cover up bro ain't no way in here i'm gonna believe it's just the gangs just making it, it go up like that you know what i'm saying now nah, they can play a part in it i ain't gonna take that away but come on now it's something going on like why that big keep going up and in november 2016 a new piece would enter the war forever shifting the dynamics of this beef this is a story of a reckless shooting on November 2016 that turned then 16-year-old NBA young boy into a bloodthirsty demon. Late October 2016, McKinley High senior Keandre Bozilla Ricks, NBA that's young boy's cousin. cousin, is sitting in a car a block away from his house. He's on Instagram Live talking recklessly about rival gang members who lost their lives in the ongoing war against top boy gorillas. That's hard. Look how they do that. TBGBG. I'm like, me thinking to myself, y'all all gorillas. Are y'all going at it with each other? Like, I feel like at one point in time, they was probably together. You feel what I'm saying? And it's always something that causes this line that you see in the middle of them. It's always something that happens to cause the line. And sometimes it don't even be the people that's on these sides that causes the line. You feel what I'm saying? It be people around. That pays attention to what's going on right here and creates something to cause controversy within two people. And you know, once one thing happened, it just keep going down the line. You feel what I'm saying? Had to give y'all a little history lesson real quick. Up north. Get off my go pick your mother brother up. Go pick yeah. your brother up. Dead. That yeah. is dead. Old, uh, the fuck? The that dead ass. Don't make me talk about you little utterly people, man. Less than a week later, November. So y'all telling me that that what YB get the little bit too hot out your stuff from? Cause I, I felt like that was like harsh, bro. Like y'all just don't be caring about how people be feeling about they folks, huh? Go pick them up. Like that's disrespectful. Damn. November the first, Wozilla's mother walks in to see her son has his book bag packed and uniform neatly ironed and ready for school the next day. But just as midnight struck, Wozilla gets a text from rival gang member Treshawn Coates. A 17-year-old linked with TBG, the text urged Buzilla to meet him outside. So, in a split-second decision, Buzilla gets out of bed, grabs his bicycle, and rides out alone 
to Nebraska Street. And when he gets there, he's confronted by Trayshawn Coates and another man, 27-year-old Monty Carey. And after a verbal altercation, Trayshawn pulls out his firearm and strikes Bozilla three times in his torso. And as he fell to the ground, investigators say 27-year-old Monty Carey would go through Bozilla's pockets in search for money, his phone, or any jewelry to sell, all while Bozilla lay there, taking his last breath of life. Why did he pull up on them? I'm talking about pull up. He rolled up on them. Not only did he ride up on them, he rolled up on them like by himself. I ain't gonna sit here and believe like they had smoke before this. Like they probably was kind of cool or whatever. But he probably wasn't cool with him or, or whatever the case may be. But for him to get up and pull up, he had to be cool with them. His last breath of life. That's crazy. I think now is a good time to mention that four months before Bozilla's slaying, Trayshawn Coates was involved in a burglary where eight firearms were stolen alongside three of his other friends where one suspect was only 13 years old and they were plotting on shooting at the feds in Baton Rouge. Tonight, authorities in Baton Rouge on the hunt for a suspect they say was part of a plot to kill police officers. Three other suspects and a 13-year-old taken into custody. The alleged threat uncovered after a failed burglary attempt at this pawn shop Saturday. Eight guns stolen. One of the suspects telling police the plan was to steal ammunition to target police officers. At the time of Bozella's murder, Trayshawn was out on bail, which was posted for $5,000. Now, not even an hour after investigators were knocking at Bozella's home to return his bike and the tragic news of his death on Nebraska Street, residents were peeking through their blinds and all they could see were two things a barrage of police officers on the streets and a silver handy with four men inside. Telandric Norman, Derek Geis, whose little brother Darius Geis was the starting running back for the Washington Commanders. I found like you need to get it together like rather start a part of it. Like bro, like you gotta clear up a little bit, fam. You know what I'm saying? You a little bit too hot out shit, bro. Like speak clear a little bit, fam. You trying. An unnamed individual and of course Kentrell Golden. Yeah. and be a young boy. They were looking to retaliate for the murder of Bozilla, but to their disappointment, they couldn't find anyone to retaliate against. So, at 9 a.m. the next morning, residents spotted that same silver handy driving past, but instead of roaming around South Baton Rouge without a clear intent, this time they had a target in mind. They lived on Kentucky Street, eight blocks away from where Bozilla was killed only nine hours prior. Derek Geis as the driver, with NBA self-paid as the passenger, with control and the unnamed suspect in the rear. So Derek pulls over on Kentucky Street, NBA young boy and NBA self-paid both hop out and unload 37 rounds on two men sitting on the porch. As there's no time to sit around and see whether the targets were hit, they both jump back inside and fled the scene, to only find out that one of their own passengers was hit in the neck by a bullet. Just after midnight. What? So young boy them slid on the ops and nobody got hit but somebody in their car? Or did I hear that the wrong way? That didn't go as planned, huh? Passengers was hit in the neck by a bullet. Just mm -hmm. after midnight, Baton Rouge police went out to Nebraska Street. 18-year-old Keandre Ricks was found dead, lying in the street, shot multiple times in the chest. Neighbors in the area tell us they saw a silver-colored Hyundai with three people inside driving around the area late night and into this morning. Then, shortly after 9.30 this morning, police get a call from a man shot once in the neck around the LSU lakes. When they finally found him, he was in a silver-colored Hyundai. He was transported to the hospital and listed in stable condition as of now. And even now, there's a theory floating around that the person responsible for the victim who was hit in the neck might have been somebody from his own entourage who shot him by freak accident. Here's what Boulevard Quick, a high-ranking TPG member, had to say on the matter. He got a tip the murder for hitting his partner because he didn't know what he was doing. Man, them ain't no gangsters, man. <laughs> gangsters? I believe in them bad boys. August 28th, three weeks and five days after the non-fatal shooting on Kentucky Street, NBA young boy and his crew fly out to Austin, Texas, where they're scheduled to perform at a concert that night. Two weeks before that, back in Baton Rouge, police had closed in and arrested the driver in that drive-by, Derek Geis. 
and later that young boy know that the Baton Rouge Police Department had an arrest warrant with his name on it. They were charging him on two counts of attempted second degree murder and would have him extradited back to Baton Rouge to await his trial. All this is happening amidst rumors that big record labels were seeking his signature for a lucrative recording deal. And when word of record labels trying to sign young boy hit Baton Rouge, it left a bad taste in some people's mouths. Daryl G Money, TBG's most prolific rapper at the time, he served as the mentor to young boy prior to their relationship going sour back in 2016 over the lack of support TBG showed to young boy on the music front. Yeah, like my little partner, he used to be like my little brother. He stayed with me and everything. So like everything was still all good until he start, you know what I'm saying, like doing his own thing, getting him a little buzz, getting a little money. He just got the big head and just started feel, like in it, like the feelings he been feeling probably deep down inside that he was scared to put out. He let that out once he got a got a name and got you know got from down here. He mad he mad about his sister too though. About his sister? Yeah, I had f her a long time ago. Oh okay okay. Yeah, he I mean, mad about I mean, that. He was. He wasn't really tripping on it back then, though, you know what I'm saying? He'd be calling me big brother and you hear me? I guess he just let that fame because yeah, now he feel like he just, this new n wherever he's supposed to be, wherever he called himself. So, after leaving the gang behind, he started his own clique in the NBA, alongside his closest friends, NBA Self Paid and NBA OG Double Three. And after TBG members Trayshawn and Monty shot Boozilla, young boy's cousin, this gave him even more reason to hate TBG. So now, NBA and BBG had a common enemy up north, and after young boy pleaded guilty to all his charges and had them reduced to aggravated assault in May 2017, the power dynamics were on the verge of shifting in Baton Rouge because TBG were not only at war with BBG anymore, they would have to look over their shoulders for friends turned ops in young boy and OG33. First at 6 o'clock, a sobering admission today by city leaders. Baton Rouge has a gang problem, and right now steps are being taken to stop gangs from wreaking havoc. A crime news conference scheduled hours before chaos broke out once again overnight with multiple shootings across the city. NBA Youngboy would be released from jail in August 2017, and after nine months being in the slammer, record labels were at his mercy. And with his new song Untouchable peaking at number 95 on the Billboard Hot 100, this wouldn't only set the scene for young boy to become Baton Rouge's most prolific rapper, but it would also spark rumors of him putting bounties on rivals' heads, all in his conquest for power in this raging gang war in Baton Rouge. Tuesday, March the 28th, 2017. Two detectives from the Baton Rouge Police Department walked into McKinley High with an arrest warrant in their hands. They were there to arrest Trayshawn Coates for the murder of NBA Youngboy's cousin, Keandre Boozilla Ricks, on Nebraska Street. Two days after Boozilla's murder, Ken Gar Taylor, his mother, said she had been getting calls from promoters who had kept Boozilla under their radar and wanted him to do a show in Georgia. But unfortunately, Trayshawn Coates had stripped that dream away from Boozilla. Monty would be arrested a week later on April the 8th. We will continue building our cases and you will continue to see us. And yes, when we arrest you and they get out of jail, you're gonna see us again. And yes, when we arrest you and they let you out of jail again, you're gonna continue seeing us. Mm. I get sick and tired of hearing from my police officers that we're dealing with the same individuals. And I'm talking about people we arrested for homicides, facts. I'm talking about people we arrested for shootings, facts. And while residents were hoping justice would be served, a small minority of men were looking for some get back. And on September the 10th, 2017, they would find what they were looking for. Because midnight on Dallas Drive, Baton Rouge, g Money was in studio with four other men and his close friend, Fat Chapo, working on his second studio album, G-Code 2. This is only two weeks after he released his scathing diss track towards NBA Youngboy, where he mentions not kissing NBA Youngboy's sister after she swallowed his nut. Back in the studio, somebody goes on IG Live and gets G Money on camera, where he mentions all his shooters riding around in Hellcats. You hear me? All my hitters got Hellcats, man. We pull up on you fast and get that business clear. But little did they know that somebody on that feed had ill intentions. And while G Money was still in the studio crafting his next body of work, NBA affiliate NBA Lil Pep was on his way from Nunes Road, Louisiana to Dallas Drive, Baton Rouge, a 37 mile journey with one heinous intention in mind ending G Money's life. He, NBA Youngboy, and OG33 were all a part of TBG prior to Youngboy leaving the gang when he felt that the label weren't giving him the recognition he deserved. Do you know the guy that's being charged? 
Okay, and you he, feel you he feel. Used, he used to be uh, around us. Aha. Back in 2014. So at 1:30 p.m., G Money and Fat Chapo pack up to leave the studio and head back home. And as Fat Chapo tidies up, 22-year-old G Money walks out of the door alone, only to be met by NBA affiliate Lil Pep, who shoots him three times with a fatal blow hitting G Money's head. When the paramedics arrived at the scene, they would lay G Money's head on a pillow, a gesture NBA young boy uses to mock his ops till this day. Three weeks after G Money's passing, NBA young boy and his manager Big Dump are in the city of Angels. Big Dump heads to exotic car rentals and picks up a Lamborghini Huracan to ride around for the weekend. That same night, for some vague reason, NBA Youngboy would grab the keys and rides out alone to Romaine Street, West Hollywood. And shortly after 10.30 p.m., police would arrive at the scene to find this wrecked Lamborghini with no passenger inside. That's because Big Dump had gotten a call following the car crash and had rushed Youngboy to a nearby hospital, which might have saved Youngboy's life. A mysterious Lamborghini was crashed, okay? Uh, we saw pictures of it on social media. Everybody was wondering who it was. We got reports that it was a rapper. Supposedly, after the car got crashed, they hopped out of that car and hopped in a Bentley. And get to find out was NBA Young Boy. And by the he raps on life support. I'm like, Bay, I could have died that night. My whip had flipped over. And as TBG members were still mourning the loss of G Money and probably punching the air that Young Boy didn't lose his life in that brutal car crash in West Hollywood, it wouldn't be long before they would have NBA mourning a loss of their own. Because on May the 4th, 2018, a black SUV would roll up on Big Dump and a 32-year-old woman. The man would aim his assault rifle and unload multiple shots hitting Big Dump and the woman. And as soon as the police announced Big Dump's demise, it's as if everybody on TBG would put their mourning to the side and the insults would rain down on Big Dump. From Fredo Bang. Talking about dead pot and It ain't like I'm on this talking about fat boy and that extra, extra large coffin he got. Let Yoshi. Hey, look here, that's how I'm feeling today. I wasn't gonna let y'all listen to this, but f that. Spin again, y'all smoking on that rice. Dump, 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 dump. Y'all smoking on that truck, yeah. And now deceased rapper, Jada Younging. Smoking on dump. And somebody in particular couldn't stop running his mouth. Boulevard Quick. It seemed like after Big Dump's demise, he couldn't get a hold of himself and had young boy's name in his mouth a little too much. Man. Yeah, man. Young boy, mom. Tell me about this. That is a big, long dick. I'm talking about a dick so long that that go through, that go through her and any daughter she ever had. And any daughter she dream about making. I ain't woke up this morning. Everybody in my ear about to talk about the little boy, little boy Quick was talking about me. But uh, I, I, I really got on him to tell him that I'm sorry. I, I came to tell little Bullet Boy Quick that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I made you cry, boo. I'm uh, for real. Because I was, I was only, I wouldn't be in mean. Like, somebody was on my thing like I'm reading now. And somebody said, oh, somebody hit me, he's a friend. So I said, fuck him, he's a friend. Because I'm like, I feel like anybody don't like my churn. And that's how I am. If you don't like my churn, you know, fuck y'all. But if I ain't tripping, my mama. I can't see that nigga. And if all this tension wasn't already enough, Boulevard Quick had a message for Young Boy in his music video, Never Lurking. So TBG Gorilla Gang, long live G Money. I'm going to talk my shit. I don't have to have money because I ain't got that much. So I'm in the field. You need, it must be counterfeit. You Bitch. drop the bag while I'm still breathing. I got breath in my body. Fake ass boy. Pull up. Gang. And it would all come to a halt on November the 26th, where a resident heard six shots fired at the Lakeside Villa apartment. And when he looked down from his balcony, he saw a man fleeing the scene and his neighbor, brutally wounded, lying lifelessly on the pavement. It was Boulevard Quick. This music video shows Ashton Wells performing under his stage name, Boulevard Quick. Baton Rouge police say the local rapper was shot and killed at his home at Lakeside Villa Apartments on Wellwood Drive after midnight. I was in bed and my balcony is right above where it happened. 
So I heard about six shots go off. Chase Corley has lived in the apartment complex for four months. He says he saw someone he thinks may have been the shooter running away. And I wasn't able to see the guy, but I saw him take off running through the uh, corridor right there, the little hallway into the woods. Damn, it's a lot I can say about that video because it's a lot that happens. And just watching that video takes us back through a lot of the stuff we went through through the years and a lot of stuff they went through through the years, man. And it's real dear sad to see like both sides lost a lot of people, not only to like gun violence, but they also lost people to the system and they still losing people to the system to this day, bro. And it's like, you can real deal sit back and look, this real deal trench movie. These is trench babies. And this is a trench movie. You see how when people make little videos like this, and I just be sitting like, damn. Like, you would damn not think this something on FX. You feel what I'm saying? Extra movies, face ads. You feel me? But this is real life. And it's something really going on, man. And it's like me personally, I don't even be feeling like it be worth it, bro. It really don't be worth it, bro. And I feel like both sides, all sides, like, be having real deal. Solid dude. But y'all let me know how y'all feel about that in the comments below, though. I'm going to catch y'all in the next video. Screw me.